Today you're taking a self-care day. You hop in the car to go get your nails done, but before driving away, you take a moment to update your half a million TikTok followers, letting them know that you're going to get a petty a Padre Hurtado. But little do you know that six hitmen are currently trying to track you down, and now they know exactly where to find you. In the vibrant world of TikTok, where dance challenges and beauty tips reign supreme, 24-year-old Sabrina Duran Montero was a rising star in Chile. So she is your typical content creator, okay? Makeup, hair, music, dancing, all that kind of stuff. Her reels, a colorful montage of trendy outfits, catchy dance moves, and glowing beauty reviews, painted the picture of a young influencer living a carefree life, mixed with sightings of her 10-year-old son. But suddenly, on March 11th, 2022, Sabrina disappeared and her once regular TikTok uploads came to a sudden halt. Three months later, Sabrina returned to uploading TikTok videos, but this time from jail. How was she posting videos from the confinements of prison? And more importantly, what did she get arrested for? Well, it turns out Sabrina has a long history. To her followers, Sabrina was the epitome of social media allure with her infectious smile, charisma, and beauty. But behind this facade lay a startling reality, one steeped in crime and even multiple arrests. Amidst her regular uploads to TikTok, Sabrina was simultaneously navigating a life deeply entangled in the world of trafficking narcotics. And it may not be the biggest surprise to learn of her criminal dealings. With her TikTok handle, Katrina Guzman and Joaquina Guzman, likely making a nod to Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the former Sinaloa cartel boss and Mexican kingpin, along with her known aliases, narco queen and narco influencer, shed light on the shady business Sabrina had entangled herself in. Though, it seems Sabrina had a difficult start in life. Reports say she was raised by her mother because her father was a violent man who was addicted to narcotics. And as the youngest of nine siblings, court documents show that Sabrina was involved in narcotics as early as her teenage years. At 13 years old, she moved in and became pregnant by a man, nearly twice her age, who displayed DV towards her during her pregnancy and kept her from finishing school and dropping out before completing the seventh grade. This DV continued up until the 24-year-old partner was arrested for trafficking narcotics. She then became involved with the man's cousin and fell in love. But this too wasn't a healthy relationship for the young mother, as she was arrested in 2017 in connection to trafficking illegal substances with him. And unfortunately for Sabrina, it was during this chase her partner's life was taken and Sabrina was arrested. Sabrina later spoke to a rehab specialist where she understood that it was illegal substances that had taken everything from her, saying, my childhood, my youth, and the man I have loved the most. Sadly, this is a reality for a growing number of youth in the country. Pilar Lizana, a security specialist at Chile's Athena Lab Research Center, notes that people like Sabrina with their power, money, and luxurious lifestyles, consisting of stolen vehicles and weapons, have become a sort of role model that the youth are looking up to. And this trend is something major people in Chile want to address. In fact, Claudia Pizarro, mayor of La Pintana, a suburb of Chile's capital, tried speaking out against the rising narcotic-related crime in the country, but was met with life-ending threats. As a result, she was placed under police protection. We understand that the narcotic culture may seem like an easier path, but it often leads to jail and even death. It's disheartening that, as a government, we have been slow to respond and provide better opportunities, the mayor said. Unfortunately for Sabrina, the path that the mayor has dreamt up for the youth of Chile is not one that she took. Instead, her involvement didn't stop at simply having a hand in the family business or even being detained the first time. Rather, it seems she became the leader of a criminal gang alongside her brothers in Peñaflor, a suburb in Santiago, the capital of Chile. And with connections to the cartel, they were known to deal in narcotics trafficking and vehicle thefts, leading Sabrina to be one of the most wanted traffickers by the PDI, according to a CHV Noticias report. But like with any criminal gang, came altercations with the opposing side. And they exchange a lot of pum pum fire, like lots of it which resulted in reports of incessant firing at all hours in Via Las Padreras and was caught on film by those living in the areas where the violent incidents took place. With neighbors anonymously reporting that you can't go out on the street at three in the afternoon 
You have to keep to yourself because there are shootings here. Subsequently, those in the area were allegedly forced to live in fear. But they don't report any of this to the police because Narco Queen and her gang would threaten them. So, with lips sealed, police weren't able to make any arrests. Instead, they set up an anonymous tip line via a website, an avenue that was subsequently flooded with reports. And these reports weren't the only key source of information. TikTok also helped in catching Sabrina. It turns out, the numerous TikTok videos Sabrina posted made it all the more easier for the police of Chile, PDI, to track her down. The routine was already well-established according to investigative techniques. So, effectively, we already knew where she was, what she was doing, said an official working on the case. Approximately 100 detectives raided 12 of the homes associated with Sabrina and her gang. Sabrina, who was inside one of the apartments, quickly realized the situation and tried escaping through a window, along with her brothers, all while PDI was busting through the apartment. But Sabrina didn't get very far before she was surrounded and surrendered herself over to police. In the raid, detectives recovered cash equaling 9 million pesos, approximately $706,000 USD, cell phones, security cameras, firearms, and multiple forms of narcotics. Sabrina was arrested and sent to a woman's prison in San Miguel and was sentenced to three years for trafficking narcotics. Naturally, there was silence on Sabrina's social media. The next time she was seen was three months later, in prison, making TikTok dances. However, her reappearance online wouldn't last forever. In fact, one of her TikTok videos would lead to her early demise. But first, what were these prison TikToks like anyway? Sabrina was happily dancing, lip syncing, styling her hair, sporting fashionable jewelry and clothing, and even decorated her bed in pink, multiple pairs of shoes, and a ledge full of cosmetics. As you can probably see, this wasn't your typical desolate cell. The room Sabrina was confined in had lockers, a dining table with the vase of flowers displayed, and multiple bunk beds shared by other inmates, who were often captured in the background of her videos. Despite phones being prohibited, Sabrina managed to record all this footage on her own phone, which she likely smuggled in. It turns out, this is a common occurrence in Chile prisons, and Sabrina's high profile likely made this process much easier, according to El País. Either way, Sabrina was thriving and gained thousands of new followers. But the most surprising life update from prison had nothing to do with crime or flaunting a luxurious lifestyle. Sabrina was in love, in love with her cellmate, Antonella Marchant, to be precise. Antonella happened to be a member of the infamous Los Marchant gang and is in jail for 15 years for narcotics trafficking, meaning Antonella wouldn't be released until 2027. Although Sabrina found her life partner, she didn't end up staying for her three-year sentence. Sabrina reportedly made a deal with prosecutors to cut her stay short in exchange for denouncing other criminals. This was a really bad decision. No one likes to be ratted out. And what happens when you rat someone out who isn't afraid to break the law? Revenge, a painful one. Danger was incoming, whether Sabrina was aware of it or not. By May 2023, Sabrina was released on parole after spending one year in prison. She was reunited with her son and went back to posting with the freedom of the outside world. Sabrina also continued her relationship with Antonella, posting romantic gifts she was sent, displays of her love in the form of a charm and painting, and even a birthday party Antonella's people organized for Sabrina in August of 2023. But being released early also came with rules. Sabrina had to live out the remainder of her sentence on assisted probation, which she spent mostly at home, with the exception of frequent stops to the beauty salon. Everything seemed to be going well on the surface, but behind the scenes, rival gangs were just getting started. See, these rival gangs were reportedly unhappy with her ratting out criminals in prison, and they were ready to seek revenge. So, since her release, a group of men were closely following her steps, according to El Desconcierto. Unfortunately for Sabrina, her social media updates are what landed her in trouble for a second and final time. On October 23, 2023, she posted these five TikTok videos we discussed earlier in the video, lip syncing in her car and sharing beauty products. But it was a seemingly innocent comment she made on TikTok that would lead her enemies right to her. A little beauty update to her followers that she would be heading to Padre Hurtado for a pedicure on the morning of October 24th, 2023. And with that unintentional tip, hitmen were prepared to ambush her. According to CHV Noticias, there were six men waiting in a vehicle by a bus stop for nearly half an hour. When Sabrina arrived, 
at least two hitmen opened fire at Sabrina while she was still seated in the vehicle. CCTV in the area shows Sabrina leaving her vehicle as one man approaches her, and she suddenly falls to the ground. The rest of the ordeal was caught on camera by a civilian passing by, showing Sabrina now laying in the middle of the street. The man then ran towards Sabrina's vehicle, which was being hijacked by three other hitmen. As the vehicle began driving away, Sabrina attempted to lift herself off the ground. As seen on video, one of the hitmen noticed Sabrina's movements and exited the vehicle, returning to Sabrina. It didn't end well. Six shots were fired by a man. And just like that, in broad daylight, Sabrina laid motionless. The perpetrator then fled the scene in the stolen vehicle. Two hitmen allegedly remained at the scene, potentially to make sure this was the end for Sabrina. Sabrina was rushed to emergency care, but sadly for her, it was too late. Sabrina Duran Montero had passed away from a total of eight firearm wounds. There were a number of vehicles nearby that were left with damage, but fortunately no one else was injured by the ambush, which, had it been a busier day, could have been a different outcome considering the altercation took place near a school and a supermarket. Sabrina's vehicle, the one hitmen used to flee the scene, was found abandoned and set ablaze not long after the incident in Quilacura, a town 30 minutes away. Sabrina's followers mourned her loss, some noting she passed away only two months after her father's death. Others even questioned if Antonella tricked Sabrina. And if it wasn't theories, it would be harsh words towards Sabrina and her fans. Some called supporters delusional and down bad for simping over a cartel leader. Another implied her time was coming because she snitched, a sentiment many theorized about online. Speculation has it that there was another woman-led gang in the same zone where she operated and they may have heard of subtle scores. And some had no sympathy for Sabrina due to her criminal lifestyle, going so far as to say, all narco must die. Another didn't excuse her difficult upbringing, while others called out the Chilean government for allowing criminals to operate so freely. And yet, even after the untimely end of her life, Sabrina's online following has continued to grow. At the time of her passing, she had over 450,000 followers on TikTok, a number that has grown to over 650,000 in following days. And of course, Sabrina's followers didn't forget about her professed wife, Antonella, telling her to be strong for Sabrina's son and help him live a better life. But for some, knowing Antonella's high profile, they encouraged her to seek revenge. In a now deleted TikTok video, an account claiming to be Antonella posted a video of balloons being released during a memorial with a message vowing to seek revenge. You don't know how much I miss you, my baby. There will be justice when I leave this damned place. Blood for blood, it will be paid. I will be justice for you. And this is something residents are worried about, stating it could be the start of an armed war due to the imminent thirst for revenge. As another Twitter user added, Today it is her, tomorrow a common practice to get rid of enemies. But what would this mean for Sabrina's funeral? Well, it turns out, the local police had their own concerns over the security risk for ceremonies held for criminals of Sabrina's caliber. Dubbed narco funerals, these types of ceremonies reportedly wreak havoc on communities, forcing schools to close as they unfold over several days. Dangerous groups dominate neighborhoods during these ceremonies, with rampant street blockades, explosive detonations, and a barrage of fireworks and firearms into the air. And the president of Chile, Gabriel Boric, finally had enough. In response to 1,700 reported narco funerals over five years, the president proposed a new legislation to limit the amount of narco funerals in Chile in 2024. He also began tearing down monuments and memorials set up by friends, family, and fellow criminals that had been built in public spaces. As a result, the procession of Sabrina's body from her home to the cemetery had with it a large police escort. The funeral, which took place on November 27th, was held at El Menantiel de Maipú Cemetery, was heavily guarded with about 90 police, 20 police vehicles, drones overhead, and both water and gas cannon vehicles, should anything go wrong. And with security guarding the cemetery entrance, Sabrina's funeral proceeded without any significant issues allowing Sabrina's family to share their heartfelt remembrances. One of her brothers remarked, You always wanted to be famous, and you achieved it. You even appeared in the international press. She always supported her family. She never said a thing or two about helping. 
Despite what she did, she was a good person. Sabrina's mother also added, Thank you for loving her. She was a good daughter and mother. Antonella, still behind bars, also made a video call into the ceremony. Though it's difficult to make out exactly what Antonella said, she also made a public Instagram post, writing, I still feel you're here with me, but you will always live in my heart. I'll love you eternally. Everything reminds me of you. You left me the most beautiful and similar to you, our King BB, likely referring to Sabrina's son. And as the months go by, Antonella still thinks of Sabrina, with recent posts like this one declaring, God united us with a purpose, and I know it was unique, real, loyal. Until the next life, we will see each other again. That I am completely sure, and I will not fail you, I promise. The facade behind this rising social media star's persona was shattered in the most unexpected and brutal way, leaving many in a state of shock. Amidst the glitz and glam, a dangerous path was taken to achieve such heights. And while many cling to the hope that this story is not over because of Sabrina and Antonella's unique love story, it calls into question the cycle of violence if settling scores continues to be the norm. This is the story of Sabrina Duran, whose secret life as narco queen haunted her until her very last moments.